In this video we will talk about tensors. We will learn how tensor components change when we rotate the coordinate system and how this transformation can be interpreted as a change of observer. Finally we will clear up a common misconception about rotating tensors, which might be obvious to some of you, but it's still worth clarifying before we move on. We'll start with first order tensors and later discuss second order tensors. In two dimensions we need two numbers to describe a vector or first order tensor. If we rotate the coordinate system, the two numbers describing the tensor change. Mathematically we can describe this change of numbers with the rotation matrix R, which depends on the angle alpha by which we rotate the coordinate system. We won't discuss in detail how this rotation matrix can be derived from basic trigonometry. All you need to know for now is that the tensor components in the rotated coordinate system, which I will denote by V with a small circular arrow, are equal to the rotation matrix R multiplied by the tensor components in the original coordinate system. As we change alpha, the rotation matrix changes and hence the tensor components in the rotated coordinate system change. When alpha is equal to zero, the rotation matrix reduces to the identity matrix and the rotated components are identical to the original ones. Now what's interesting about the rotation of the coordinate system is that we can also interpret it as the rotation of the observer. Let me explain what I mean. Imagine we attach a camera to the coordinate system, so that it rotates together with the coordinate system. If we let the camera record what's happening, here's what we see when we play it back. Through the camera it doesn't look like the coordinate system is rotating, instead the tensor appears to rotate. And this can be a source of confusion. We know that the tensor itself doesn't change when we rotate the coordinate system. But on the right where we see the same process through the camera it looks like the tensor is rotating. This can easily lead to the misconception that rotating the coordinate system is equivalent to rotating the tensor. But this is not necessarily true. It depends on the context. To clear up this confusion let's consider a simple physical example. Imagine you are flying through space in a spaceship at a constant velocity. This velocity is described by a first order tensor. If you rotate the coordinate system, the numbers representing the tensor change. However, the tensor itself doesn't change and the underlying physics doesn't change. The spaceship is still moving in the same direction. If we again attach a camera to the coordinate system and play back the recording, we see that all objects, including the spaceship, the asteroids and the velocity tensor appear to be rotating. But once again we haven't changed the physics. The spaceship is still moving in the same direction. We are just viewing the same process from a different angle. So if we rotate both the objects and the tensor, the physics doesn't change. But what happens if we keep the objects fixed and rotate only the tensor? In that case we are actually changing the physics, the spaceship now moves in a different direction. What can be confusing is that in all three cases we discussed, the tensor components transform in exactly the same way. In each case the transformed tensor components are given by the rotation matrix multiplied by the original tensor components. When we rotate just the coordinate system or equivalently when we rotate all objects in the system, the underlying physics remains unchanged. But if we rotate only the tensor while keeping all other objects fixed, we are effectively changing the physics. Therefore, whenever you use the formula for rotating a tensor, it's crucial to be clear about whether you are rotating the entire system or only the tensor itself. So to summarize, we have looked at three cases. In the first case, we rotated the coordinate system, which didn't change the physics. In the second case, we rotated the observer, which again didn't change the physics. But in the third case we rotated the tensor itself, while keeping everything else fixed, and this did change the physics. Ok, let's apply what we have learned to second order tensors. We can visualize a second order tensor by visualizing how it transforms vectors. If we denote some undeformed vectors by capital X, we get the corresponding deformed vectors lowercase x by multiplying f with the undeformed vectors. As a side note, the formula x equals f times x can be interpreted as a so-called homogeneous deformation mapping. It can be used to describe a deforming object in which each point moves according to the same linear transformation, 
You can learn more about this in my videos on nonlinear continuum mechanics, but it's not that important for this video. Let's see how the components of the second order tensor F change when we rotate the coordinate system. Once again, we will use the rotation matrix R, which depends on the angle alpha by which we rotate the coordinate system. We already know how the components of the vectors capital X and lowercase x change when we rotate the coordinate system. If we want to compute the components of the second order tensor after rotation, we can use this formula. We can verify that this formula is correct by checking whether F circular arrow multiplied by capital X circular arrow indeed gives lowercase x circular arrow. First, we substitute the formulas for F circular arrow and capital X circular arrow. The resulting expression simplifies because R transposed R equals the identity matrix. Feel free to pause the video and see why this is the case. F times capital X is lowercase x and R times lowercase x is indeed lowercase x circular arrow. So the rotated deformed x is indeed equal to the rotated f times the rotated undeformed x, which is exactly what we wanted. This means our formula is correct, and we know how the components of a second order tensor change if we rotate the coordinate system. Let's apply this to a physical example. As we already know, second order tensors can be used to describe deformation. Let's assume that our tensor describes the deformation of a crystalline material. If we rotate the coordinate system, the components of the tensor change, but the deformation of the crystal doesn't change. As we've done before, we can fix a camera to the coordinate system. Looking through the camera, we see that both the tensor and the crystal rotate, leading to exactly the same deformation. We are just seeing it from a different angle. However, if we rotate the tensor while keeping the crystal fixed, we are actually changing the physics. In this case, we observe a different deformation of the crystal. So again, when rotating tensors, we must be clear about what we mean. Rotating both the tensor and the entire physical system doesn't change anything. But rotating only the tensor changes the physics. That's all I wanted to show in this video. In the next video we'll learn that all tensors have properties that stay the same if we rotate the tensors, the so-called tensor invariance. Until then, stay tuned, bye!